Hi, I'm Kelly Chase and this is History Detective and today I'm looking at the bespectacled chap whose face graces our $20 note, the Reverend John Flynn. Today we're not only going to learn about how John Flynn came to be immortalised on our money, I'm going to introduce you to Jim Darcy, whose tragic death motivated John Flynn to embark on the remarkable work that he did in establishing the Royal Flying Doctors Service in Australia. Reverend John Flynn was born in 1880 and after graduating high school he could not afford to go to university so he became a student teacher with the Victorian Education Department. This is where he developed an interest in first aid. Then in 1903 he began training as a Presbyterian minister. During this period he also spent some time in outback missions. In 1913 he was asked to create a survey of the Northern Territory and report back on the needs of both the Aboriginal people of the area and the white people. This work led him to being appointed as the superintendent of the Australia Inland Mission. The mission was to care for both the spiritual and physical health of the people in rural Australia. And to give you an idea of what a massive task this was, at the time that he started, there were only two doctors in an area of 1.8 million square kilometres in the Northern Territory and Western Australia. This was almost the same size of the entire country of Mexico. In 1917, Flynn read the news of Jim Darcy's death. Jim was an Aboriginal stockman whose tale of insufficient care sparked an idea in John Flynn that would become the world's first flying medical service. Jim was a jackaroo at the Ruby Downs cattle station in the Kimberley in Western Australia. It could not be any further from almost all of the major Australian cities. One day in 1917, there was a cattle stampede and Jim Darcy jumped on a horse to try and head them off. Darcy was thrown over the top of the horse and was consequently trampled by some of the stampeding cattle. He was found in a very poor state by some jackaroos, but the nearest person who could help with even some basic first aid training was the postmaster, Fred Tuckett. However, Fred was still 80 kilometres away and that journey takes at least a whole day on horseback. By the time that Darcy made it to the postmaster, Tuckett realised that Darcy had internal bleeding and so this was way beyond his capability of treating with his basic first aid training. So Tuckett sent Morse code messages to the two closest towns. This was before telephones and radio communication infrastructure had been installed in rural Australia, so the only way to communicate was through Morse code. Tuckett received messages back that the two closest doctors were out bush and would not return for days, so instead he sent a message to Perth, which was more than 3,800 kilometres away. That would take two weeks to travel in those days. This was the year 1917. There were radio stations, but they only had a range of about 480 kilometres. It was like a relay of sending a message to one station, who then passed it on to the next, and the next, and the next, until finally the message arrived. Eventually they worked out that poor Darcy had a ruptured bladder, and that it was decided that the postmaster, who had no sterile equipment nor any anaesthetic, would operate on him using a pen knife with the jackaroos holding him down. Over the next few hours, with messages bouncing back and forward from Perth, Tuckett performed the operation while Jim was still awake and found that he did have a ruptured bladder and he stitched it up. And remember, this guy only had basic first aid training. Over the next few days, Tuckett performed two more operations, but Jimmy's condition deteriorated. The doctor from Perth decided to travel up to the Kimberley to help, but the journey took 14 days and sadly, Jim Darcy died one day before he arrived. When John Flynn heard this story, he was so moved that he knew he had to do something to make sure that the people in Outback Australia were able to get access to medical care. He used his magazine The Inlander to raise awareness of the issues facing people in rural Australia and worked to raise funds to buy planes. He also worked with a radio engineer named Alfred Traeger to make a wireless radio that worked in remote areas. Just over 10 years after the death of Jim Darcy, the Australian Aerial Medical Service became the first flying medical service in the world. In 1942, it was renamed the Flying Doctor Service, and in 1955, the word Royal was added to the front of it, and it officially became known as the Royal Flying Doctors Service. 
These days, the Royal Flying Doctor's Service is able to help someone every two minutes. And there's even a dramatised TV series called RFDS. Don't forget to hit subscribe and in the description below, you'll find a link to my website where you'll find a list of references and links to teaching resources. This is Kelly Chase on The Case. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this video is being recorded today. I pay my respects to the elders and knowledge holders past, present and emerging.